Hi everyone, my name is An and I'm a 3D designer on the Clo team. In this video, I will take you through using and customizing fabrics, navigating their properties using Clo's default fabric library, and how to use the object browser and property editor. Let's begin. Unlike real fabric, where the textured surface and fabric attributes are interwoven, fabrics in Clo consist of two primary parts, the physical property and a 2D texture image. Physical properties relate to the physics of the fabric, such as how the fabric stretches and the drape of a garment, whereas the 2D texture is the digital representation of the fabric surface. This can be anything from a color, print, or weave. Both are required to best accurately express real fabrics. There are a variety of commonly used fabrics available in Clo's preset library. Check the contents by placing the cursor on the fabric. Each fabric includes surface textures and their standard physical properties. However, any of these fabrics can also be customized to match your project's needs. To apply fabric to your garment, simply drag and drop them into your object browser on top of the default fabric. Notice how each fabrication applied affects the drape of the garment. There are a number of ways to add multiple fabrics. Again, you can simply drag and drop any additional fabric you wish to apply into the object browser. Click the Add button within the Fabric tab to add additional default fabric, or double-click your desired fabric for it to appear in the object browser. Alternatively, you can drag fabrics onto the patterns directly in either the 3D or 2D windows to apply them. Select Copy to duplicate any fabric within the object browser. To apply or change any assigned fabrics, select the pattern pieces you wish to change and click the Assign to Selected Patterns icon to the right of the fabric. Notice that when you select a fabric, all pattern pieces with that applied fabric will be highlighted in the 3D and 2D window. This allows you to easily distinguish multiple flags applied, especially if they appear to be the same color. Delete any fabrics by clicking on the delete icon, or right click on the fabric and choose delete. Make sure that the fabric you wish to delete is not applied to any pattern pieces, or else the delete option will be grayed out. You also notice when you right click, there is an option to import XX files. These are high quality scans from a Visu machine that include a texture image, normal map, and specular map if you choose to scan your own fabrics. In order to customize fabric, select the fabric you wish to edit located in your object browser. You can think of the object browser as your production bill of materials. Anyone who's worked in the apparel industry will probably be familiar with the term. Most of the standard trims can be found and customized in this window. Find the property editor section below. Here in fabric, you can open an existing ZFab file or save current fabric properties as a new fabric. Click name to rename your fabric. Expand Type, then click to view or edit material type and content. Below that, you'll find Material. You will notice there are tabs for front, back, and side, which allow you to customize each individual side of a fabric. Click on this icon to open the window where your fabric texture images are stored. If you wish to upload your own texture, whether it be a scanned image of a fabric or an image from the internet, you can import your file in this window. Keep in mind when importing a texture, your image should be a seamless tile image. This will prevent you from seeing any tile repeat of the image on your garment. It is also recommended to use texture images with a DPI of 300. This will give you the best results. Expand the texture menu to find the desaturation option to desaturate texture color. This will allow you to recolor your fabric if necessary. Use the shadow intensity and shadow brightness sliders to edit texture contrast. These options will only appear if the desaturation option is checked on. Below that is the normal map. A normal map is an image file that helps express the realistic uneven texture of the fabric by applying shadows. This gives the illusion of depth. If you do not see a thumbnail image of an applied normal map, simply expand the menu and change the intensity, which will automatically populate one for you based on your current texture image. You can also use the default normal maps in Clo using fabrics located in the default fabric library. Add the fabric type you wish to use in the object browser. Locate the fabric's normal map and open the image location. Save the normal map image to a preferred location or, if you're using a PC, click and copy the search bar above. Go back to the fabric you wish to apply the normal map to and simply paste the file location to find the image and hit enter. Select the normal map and open to apply.
Changing it to a positive value will create a protruding bump surface versus a negative value, which will create a more inverted slash embossed effect. Next, you will find color. Click on the thumbnail to open the color palette window. Color can be applied to fabrics, buttons, buttonholes, top stitches, as well as a bunch of other trims. You'll notice that there are options to input RGB, HSV, or CYK values into the color palette window. The color eyedropper tool has the ability to pick colors from within or outside the program. Add any custom made colors by clicking the add button. Delete a color chip by right-clicking on it and selecting Delete. Enlarge color chips with the slider above the palette or below the pattern library. Name a renamer color by double-clicking on a color chip. Reorder color chips by dragging them into your desired order. Change the view of the color swatches by selecting either of these icons. Also, custom color palettes can be created in Clo or imported as an ASC or ACL file. Both are common file export types in most 2D CAD software. Click on the plus symbol above to import your color palettes. Or click here to save a working color palette. Note that to achieve color value consistency when importing to another CAD software, be sure to export palettes in RGB color format. Remember to have the desaturation texture option checked on in order to change a color's texture completely. If it's not, the result will be a mix of the two colors. Next is fabric type. Select the drop-down menu beside it to change a fabric's light properties. Select the appropriate material type to best match the real-life properties of the fabric. Next is type. Select the drop-down menu beside it to change a fabric's light properties. Select the appropriate material type to best match the real-life properties of the fabric. Expand type to find controls for roughness and reflection intensity. Roughness controls the sharpness of reflections, while reflection intensity increases the amount of reflection. Lower values allow light to be reflected in a small area, while larger values allow light to be reflected on the whole object area. The amount of roughness can be changed with the intensity slider, or a custom roughness snap may be important. Using the drop-down menu, adding a normal map makes the surface of the fabric appear bumpy, which reduces the highlights. Using a normal map is similar to increasing roughness. The amount of roughness can be changed with the intensity slider, or a custom roughness map may be imported. Using the drop-down menu, adding a normal map makes the surface of the fabric appear bumpy, which reduces the highlights. Using a normal map is similar to increasing roughness. Next, in texture transformation, you will find all the angles and dimensions of the texture image applied. To ensure it retains the original dimensions while working, select Lock Aspect Ratio. The opacity slider will add transparency to fabric, a 100 being fully opaque and 0 being invisible. Below that, in Physical Property, find the present drop-down menu to view the library of fabric properties. You only need to assign one if working with the default fabric and wish to create your own custom fabric, since the default fabric does not reflect any specific fabric property. Expand Detail to find all the individual attributes of a fabric's physical properties. Stretch represents how stretchy or stiff the material is. Shear is the stretch value of the fabric's bias. Bending reflects how a fabric stiffness affects drape. Buckling is used to express the shape of a fabric's creases. For instance, if the buckling ratio is high and buckling stiff is low, you will get sharper folds. Internal damping reduces the bounciness of the fabric while working in animation mode. Density pertains to the fabric's weight in grams per square meters. Friction coefficient describes the friction between fabrics. Remember that the higher the value, the more friction is applied. Lastly, thickness allows you to change the thickness of a fabric manually. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial.